Hello, Frank Whitmer here from Verity Precision here to talk about the Optimizer Advanced controller and the shell mode for that. So with, with the Optimizer Advanced, the uh, best thing to do is start with how to connect to it and uh, how to establish the uh, shell connection. So just as a review, on the um, Advanced controller, you're going to find there is a Ethernet 1, EN1, there's an EN2, and EN1 is a single isolated Ethernet port that um, has a default IP address of 192.168.0.200. And the uh, second port, EN2, or known as VLAN inside the controller, VLAN2, it's a three-port switch, and it has a default IP address of 192.168.2.200. Um, then there's also a third port. Uh, this is USB 1, and this is a USB-C connection and has a fixed IP address. So even if you don't know what the IP addresses are for EN1 and EN2, you will always be able to connect via the USB 1 connection, and it has a fixed address of 192.168.255.241. Uh, it utilizes uh, IP connectivity over USB and you'll see in your uh, device manager and your ethernet settings that it's an RNDIS driver that gets utilized for that. Um, and then also one here, uh, there's a USB 2 as well. Uh, USB 2 is used for, and it's a USB-C, it gets used for the USB flash drive backup and restore, which will be a future video. And then also it is the connection to the IF LAN 2 adapter if you're doing LAN works integration with your advanced controller. So, uh, shell connection. Basically, I know on the older JSES, we always had the micro USB, and in the old legacy, we had the old uh, uh, nine pin serial. And on the uh, advanced controller, we use USB one, which is the USB-C connection. Uh, you're gonna plug into your computer with that. So you have your ethernet connection with it, with that uh, dedicated IP address, but you also have a serial connection with that. So if you were to go into your um, your device settings in your computer. Um, when you plug into the, the site, into the um, advanced controller, you're going to find you have a, another serial device and it'll give you a COM port number. Uh, so obviously that COM port number is what you're going to use um, for setting up the port. Uh, we use PuTTY for the uh, connection and you set up your COM port and then you have your baud rate of 115,200, eight data bits, one stop bit, no parity, and no flow control. Uh, this is exactly the same as what you would do for your uh, JS8000 connection for, for Shell. Uh, so same settings, uh, it's just you're using the USB-C connection to bring that up. So if we go and we look at that, um, actually let's go back here. The uh, Shell mode functions. So when you do log into Shell, uh, you're going to find a menu in there. Um, and you'll also see on there the... Uh, you can see what the host ID is for that controller, what build version is being used, uh, system time and date, uh, what the uh, HTTPS port is for the uh, for the daemon connection, for your, your platform connection. Um, and also it's going to give you your IP addresses uh, for your uh, Ethernet ports. And then you'll have a menu uh, selection which is going to go through your update system time, update your network settings. You can ping a host with that. Um, there are network port control that you can do, USB backup restore. Uh, you can reset the switch configuration from this menu. If it's something got messed up or you accidentally dele um, disabled all the ports, you can go in the shell and you can reset your switch. And then there's also a system diagnostic page uh, that you can go to. Uh, and if we look at what the system diagnostic uh, page shows, this is where you'll be able to go in and see um, your CPU usage information, uh, the system log information, which normally you would go in through uh, platform and see from within the platform administration. Uh, and then also the same with the Niagara daemon threads. Um, normally you would see through platform administration, but you can see through shell in here. Um, one thing to point out, is when you're working with um, with this shell, it's not like an 8000 where when you boot up, um, it goes through and you can watch the whole boot up process and what's happening under the hood. 
Uh, you don't get any of that information. Basically, all you're going to get is this login prompt, which we can then log in. And you're going to notice in here, too, if you stop doing anything with it for a minute or two, it's going to force you to put your login again. So there's some security precautions added there so that if you step away for a minute, you come back or step away, somebody jumps in behind you. It's going to not let somebody do any work on that. You have to put your password in there again. Uh, so if I keep rambling along, it's going to do that to me and we'll have to re-enter it. Uh, but basically, we're live now looking at my uh, advanced controller. And you can see what its host ID is, what version I'm running. I could go in here and just like you could on the 8000, I could go in and I could update the time. You could go in there and do all these different settings. If you wanted to, we could go in and we can look at the, you know, to do the backup restore. We'll go through some of that probably in a future video, uh, but it's available. You could go through, there's a configure Wi-Fi. What's out right now, what's been released does not have Wi-Fi built in. So that is not a feature that you can use at this point. So if you were to go there, it's going to tell you it's your device is not supported or does not have uh, Wi-Fi supported. Um, then from within there, we have the ability to go and see the system diagnostics options. So from here, we can go in and, as I said, we could look at our some CPU usage. These are things that you're really not going to need to go to unless you're having an issue and tech support says, hey, go into Shell. Let's look at your diagnostic information and see what we can pull out of there. Um, so you could go in and get your system logs, which normally you would do from your platform administration, we could do that from here. So if we want to look at the current log, all that data comes up. And then when it's done, it'll go back to a uh, hit any key to continue. And uh, you could do a copy and paste this into a, um, a text file and then send it off to, to our tech support or whatever, you know, when you get requested for the information, you have the ability to get that. Um, same thing with the Niagara threads. You have the ability to grab that from here as well. So if we go back to the main menu, um, you could update your network settings. So if you wanted to change your IP addresses in here, you would be able to do that just by going into two. It's, it reads the current configuration, and then you go through it no different than what you had in your shell for your, for your 8000 for setting that up. Let's give it a second to go through. At least it's given us some uh, dots on the screen to show that it is actually still doing something and we're not locked up. There we go. So here we could change the host name if we want. We could go in and change the domain gateway, server, IP addressing. All that can be done from within there. I can just hit Control C and get back out and we get back to this menu. Um, one word of caution and... Uh, if you look closely at this menu, there is something missing that we have in the 8000, and I want to make sure I bring it to your attention. Um, if you don't know what your passphrase is or your platform login, there is no way to get in and uh, reset that from here. One, you need your platform credentials just to get into this menu system. There is no other information that you can get to. You can't break out of a boot or any of those things we've done in the past. Uh, so there is no means in here. There's no way to... Uh, reset your credentials and your passphrase for your uh, for the advanced controller. So the only thing that you would be able to do would be to go and do a factory reset. Um, and I'll probably do a video at some point on on how to do that reset. You can do it on a you know a power up reset, or while it's running, you can actually force it to reset as well. But keep in mind when you do a factory reset. You lose all the commissioning. You lose your the modules that are in there. You lose the station. So if you don't have a station backup, it's a pretty pretty drastic uh, thing to uh, blow this away, and then you'd have to start from scratch. And you know, hopefully, you want to do that. So I guess the uh, the thing to keep in mind here is take good notes and make sure that you um, keep track of what your credentials are and what your passphrase is, and and probably should and it should be passed along to the end user so they do have that information in case uh, it's needed. You know, when somebody comes in for to service it and it may not have the, the information. It's always good to have information handy to uh, to be able to get back in there if need be. Uh, but that basically covers the shell. There's not a whole lot in there, but uh, I thought it was worth going through. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. And uh, take care and see you next time. Thank you.